and it's just such a sad day. I mean, I can only sum it up in one way that Michael represents to me the cornerstone of the entire global music industry. And by that I mean it doesn't matter what genre of music you represent or who the artist is. You know, it could be Springsteen, it could be Beyonce, Mariah, it could be anyone, but Michael certainly was that was the cornerstone musically to everything and connected all of those things. Is there a morality tale, Tommy, uh, to the fact that as big as he was and as you so eloquently uh, paint this picture of this gigantic global success story, uh, that he was often broke, uh, he didn't have 50 bucks in his pocket from time to time, uh, his personal items were being auctioned off, uh, these series, this impossible series of 50 concerts in the United Kingdom was largely to keep him solvent, uh, borrowing money from Persian Gulf potentates. I mean, is there a morality tale there, Tom? You know something, Geraldo, what, what comes with that kind of uh, extraordinary fame is extraordinary pressure. Those pressures, I don't know anyone that could withstand that, especially from the age of five or six when he started with the stresses that he lived with going through all of that and growing up with it. Not only that, then turning into the, the largest pop icon that the world has ever known. Those pressures would be difficult for anyone to ever live with. You know, whether it affected finances or your, you, yourself physically, all of those aspects. It was, it's amazing to me that he was able to withstand it even this long. I don't know if you're near a television screen, Tommy, but we are watching as the, uh, as the Chopper Chopper 5 lands at the coroner's office with the remains of the king of pop. Uh, you know, he, however he lived, uh, this is a very hum, humble final scene to that, uh, to that story that we all, that trajectory that we all witnessed as they uh, take his remains out of the chopper uh, and our live cameras watch it. I was, Tommy, I have to say before I let you go, uh, just in the, you know, in the times that I was with Michael and talking to the people who were closest to him during his times of greatest duress, I was extremely skeptical that these British concerts would ever go on. I know that as recently as a couple of months ago, he had not hired a choreographer. Uh, you know, the fact that he was quote unquote rehearsing in Los Angeles. He hadn't hired any dancers, as far as I know, till six, seven weeks ago for this incredible series of concerts. Do you think that this final burden helped put him over the top? I think that the pressure of that burden uh, was, had to be enormous for Michael. Uh, don't forget, being the icon that he is and trying to recreate that once again, I'm sure it put an inordinate amount of pressure on him that, you know, would be difficult for anyone to bear, you know. And, and the only thing that I hope is that everyone would at least give him and the family the respect of treating him with as much of the respect that he is really due as, as one of the greatest creative forces ever, despite the things that may have been in his life or his, or his pitfalls. You know, he deserves that, I think, more than anyone, because he's certainly given all of us so much. Tommy Mottola, the uh, former chairman of, uh, of Sony Music Entertainment, and uh, a giant in the business in his own right. Uh, Tommy, thanks, uh, thanks for taking the time to get on the phone. I appreciate it. Thank you, Veralda. Uh, okay. Um, you know, there, there is a, I, people are saying that you know, this is going to be like uh, when Princess Di died. I, I don't believe that it will be that kind of roar outpouring because people are so conflicted, even those who love Michael Jackson, and believe me, uh, because I was part of that that world for you know the period around this latest criminal case, I saw the devotees, I saw the groupies, I saw all the rest of it, and I was actually with Michael Jackson in Times Square, not more than two years ago. I forgot about it till the second. We've got to get that tape. My, oh, I wasn't physically with him. He got on the phone. We talked to his fans in Times Square uh, who had gathered there to show their support. 
And Julie Banderas, our Julie Banderas, is in Times Square now live uh, with some of the, uh, the fans and some of the uh, people who are uh, curious about uh, the activities of uh, this tragic day. And she also has a look into Jackson's uh, turbulent childhood. Julie. Yeah, Geraldo, first of all, just to give you an idea of some, if you could just pan over here, Paul, just so you can see the masses of crowds that have gathered here in Times Square. Those are actually the ticket booths where people come and buy Broadway tickets. People have been asking me, is there a show in Times Square? What's going on in Times Square? We tell them Michael Jackson has died. Many people, when they learned about Michael Jackson passing away, they came to Times Square for some reason. Perhaps this is because this is the crossroads of the world where people from all around the country, all around the world come to gather here today. Uh, Silvio is actually from Australia. Silvio, you got the news. You're here traveling in New York City. Absolutely. Tell me about the news when you heard about uh, it. Well, I was absolutely shocked. I mean, from an Australian, I mean, Michael Jackson, I mean, he, you know, he right. transcended countries, nationality, you name it. So for me, it was unbelievable. All right, I'm going to send it back to Geraldo real quick, and then we're going to come right back to us here live in Times Square. Geraldo? Julie, we'll be right back uh, to you. They are preparing to remove the mortal remains or the the physical remains of Michael Jackson from the uh, from the chopper from the sheriff's chopper into the coroner's van for transport uh, into the building and as we look at this universally humbling experience and this scene this poignant scene it's hard to make the transition from this to the thriller video or the uh, Ed Sullivan appearance or the other seminal events uh, that have uh, uh, marked his life. So now uh, he's in a plain white van. Uh, they will be transporting him uh, from what Adam reported to an expedited autopsy. Uh, the, the toxicology results, doctor, will take how long, Dr. They'll Siegel? Take, they'll take about two or three days. The first part will be to look at the physical remains, the organs themselves, and then they will start to look at them under the microscope. The entire autopsy should take just a few days. Some of the toxicology reports will take a little longer. The initial ones, just two or three days. When, 